Hi, I'm Ben Secrets, and this is the third part of our retouching workflow guide, where I'm going to be taking you through a method we can use to selectively sharpen an image. So the first thing we need to do is merge all our layers to a new top layer, and you can do this with Shift, Alt, Command and E if you're on a Mac, or Shift, Alt, Control and E if you're on a PC. And now duplicate this layer with Command and J if you're on a Mac or Control J if you're on a PC. And we're just going to make this top layer invisible and select the layer below it. So this method of sharpening involves creating a high frequency layer, which is a layer with just the fine details from the image and everything else removed. So to create our low frequency layer, we're just going to use a Gaussian blur filter. And the amount of blurring we use in this filter is going to determine the cutoff point of our high frequency layer. And don't forget to zoom the image to a magnification level which divides down from 100. So here I've just got it zoomed to 25%. And actually so we can see the effects of the sharpening and the blurring properly. So we're looking to blur the image to a point where we're just removing the top layer of surface details. So in this case it's about 2 pixels. And now we can go and select our top layer again and turn the visibility back on. And we're going to go to Apply Image. And here we just want to make sure that the layer selected is the layer we just blurred. The Invert box is ticked. We want the Blending Mode as Add and a Scale set at 2. And this is really our original image minus all the low frequency information. And you can see it's mostly grey with just a few vague outlines. So now select the Blending Mode of Linear Light and you'll see we've reconstructed our original image with a high frequency and a low frequency layer beneath it. So if, because we're sharpening we can delete our low frequency layer. And now you can see you've got a very uniformly sharpened image. But because this is a retouching process there'll be some parts of the image won't sharpen more than others. So a method I use just to control the strength of this sharpening effect a bit is to create a mask layer on our high frequency layer then select all the background and copy it and now alt click on our mask layer icon and now we're just going to paste the contents of our sharpened layer into its own mask and we can invert that with command i for a mac or control i for a pc and now click back on the high frequency layer again and you can see this has given us a slightly more subtle sharpening effect, which is less harsh on the skin. And now we've got a mask layer controlling our sharpening a bit. We can use this to control the strength of the sharpening selectively across the image. So select a white brush. And with the mask layer selected, we're just going to paint over any of the bits of the image which you want to be extra sharp. So in this case, we'll start with the eyes and eyebrows. And around the nose and the lips. And we can just go through and highlight any details you want to be extra sharp. And a key part of retouching is being aware of where the eye is drawn around an image. So we'll often want eyes, lips and facial features clearly defined. While we can tone down other elements like skin and hair. So here the skin texture is a little bit too noticeable. So here we can use a black brush to go over these areas to reduce the sharpening effect. And we can just go over the image doing the same, basically painting a sharpening map uh, for which areas we want to be sharp and which areas we want to be slightly softer. So that's a very standard retouching workflow, just looking at the basics of skin smoothing, stylizing and sharpening. One thing we haven't looked at is the liquidify tool. And if you're going to do that, you can do it at any point before sharpening. An important thing to remember is that ideally we don't want any sharpening at all applied to the image until the last stage. And that means taking any sharpening off in the raw conversion or in camera. Now we haven't done anything too drastic to the image. I think the trend nowadays is really for retouching not to look like retouching. But one of the best things you can do is look at pageant retouching. And as long as yours looks nothing like that, you should be on the right tracks.